All right, welcome back to another episode of Dad's Diag. Today we have a 2006 Chevy Cobalt, and it's got a check engine light. And the code that came up was for the, uh, the purge, not the purge, the, uh, the vent valve being underperforming. Uh, so I brought up some, some live data, which you can see here, and uh, I don't know if you can read that, but it says negative 30.8 millimeters of mercury. Um, that's a, a very intense vacuum, uh, and for a pressurized fuel system, that is a very incorrect number. So, uh, what I decided to do is I had to look up where the, the, the pressure sensor lives, and thankfully on this car, it does not live on top of the fuel tank. It lives in the vent valve, which is under the car. So let's go under there with this. I'm reading live data now. Let's go under there and see what happens when I unplug it. Right here, this is where the pressure sensor lives, right here on the vent valve. See me moving it around? And show you with the now I'm going to unplug it and we're going to watch that number go from negative 30 hopefully you can see that to plus 13.86 uh, that is basic atmospheric pressure and the uh, the pressure sensor voltage is now zero I'm going to plug it back in. The pressure sensor voltage is 4.80, which I believe is maxed out, and the pressure is now negative 30. So I believe we have a, a short to positive inside the pressure sensor. So these things are fairly readily available. And I went out and picked one up from the auto zone. There's your, let me see, where's your part number? There's your part number. SU1390. And yes, it's a Duralast. Now, considering the age of the car, I'm not that concerned. But right now, the customer is trying to get through inspection. And this problem here is preventing her from being able to complete the test because it says it's, it's so far out of range. So let's just for the heck of it, let's get the pressure sensor and plug it in. And what do I have? Uh, with the pressure, so it's definitely a pressure sensor. With it plugged in, I am now reading zero, which means it's not pressurized, it's not in a vacuum. So, and the voltage is uh, 1.55 volts. That's what it should be when there is no pressure in the system. So I believe we made a good diagnosis. Now what we have to do is see if we can pop this thing out. I'm not sure how hard that is. This thing may squirt. I am not sure. 
try to do it without breaking any plastic. Oh, there we go. She's just about free. What am I hitting? There we go. There's the old pressure sensor. Now, let me, uh, Here's the new one. Well, the new one's here. Let me get a, a bit of lubrication. A little silicone grease. I don't want to bind up this rubber seal here. I want it to slide in nice and smooth. There. And it's in. All right. I hope you can see that. Now we're reading negative 1.2, we're venting. So let's see, I tried to run a test and it wouldn't let me run it. Let's do an active test on the engine. EVAP vent solenoid. It wouldn't let me do it because the pressure was so far out of range. So let's turn it on. It says we're venting now. And it has the vent on now. See, it worked. Now, at this point, I'm not sure that I want to reset the codes because it's due for, for inspection right now. All right, let's turn it on. Now it's not venting. Let's see if we see a change in pressure. Also had a code for a misfire, uh, random, a PO300. And that may have been because of the erroneous data from here adjusting fuel trims. So it is changing and our voltage is, is adjusting. Now let's turn it off. There, it readjusted to negative 1.46. So the EVAP system is sucking fumes out of the fuel tank right now, and that's what we're reading. Slightly under atmospheric pressure, it's negative 1.46. So now we just have to see if we can get it to go through a drive cycle, and hopefully it should clear out that check engine light on its own. Um, it has other codes. I'm not going to look into them right now. This is the only one I'm worried about. In fact, let's see. Let's go to plain old OBD2. Let's see which codes it comes up with this time. All right, a lot of monitors did not get set, 10 of them. Monitors incomplete, zero. Monitors okay, one. Mill status says it's off. Let's 
to I am readiness. Misfire monitoring is okay. Fuel system monitoring is okay. Component catalyst monitoring is incomplete. That's a whole nother problem, but that could also be fuel trims. EGR system is incomplete. So we've got a few incomplete codes. Now we'll uh, we'll let it run them. I said even if it even if it runs all the monitors, that one was holding it up from completing all the monitors. Now that it can complete the EVAP system it may come up with a code for something else after that. Uh, so there's no guarantee this is going to fix everything. But uh, it was definitely a, an easy fix. Um, you saw how easy it was to replace. Uh, I have to give Chevy a, a kudos for that because most cars you have to take the fuel tank down to get to it. This one, it was up on ramps and it's right there looking you in the face. Uh, so I'll call that a fix for that problem. Uh, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up or a like. Thanks for watching.